Welcome to JAK Plays Indie Games. This is Bionic Deuce from Arkin Games. Now, I really like Arkin Games just as a studio because whenever they come out with a new game, you know, it might be a great game or it might be kind of crap, but it's always unique. Like, they always have a unique twist on things. They always come up with new stuff that you don't expect. And I really like that about their studio. So I almost always buy their games. I almost always like wait with bated breath for their games to come out. Like I, I really enjoy their stuff. Even when I don't particularly like the game, I like seeing the new spin on things that they put out. So this is Bionic Deuce. It's a roguelike um, that's hard to explain because they put a unique spin on all their games. So I'm going to just start a new game and kind of show you what's up as opposed to trying to categorize things. But it's a turn-based tactical strategy game. That that Those things are all true, at least, without giving it a strange label. So we're going to start a new game here. Um, I left the tutorials on so that you can you can see them and I can kind of talk about them. I've, all, I've played two games of it, and I've not played more than like three or four missions of each of those games. I've basically just been kind of teaching myself how to play. Uh, so I'm not good at this, and I'm not going to win. Don't, don't expect that. Uh... But expect expect it to be a fun ride, no matter what happens. Hopefully, it will at least get to the to the losing condition. Okay, starting a new game. Um, it's telling me that as a new player, I should stick with this because I'm doing a let's play. I'm not going to stick with this, and I stuck with this my other time, and I, I didn't really like it. Actually, it do, it doesn't want me to stick with this because this it actually tries to get you to do this to start with, I think. Uh, but I'm also not going to do this. So there are a bunch of different characters here, and I've kind of looked at them all. That's the difficulty. Characters. I've kind of looked at them all. Meg here is your default. She gets better gear. And all of these guys have uh, have cool effects. So I think I'm going to go with uh, not Tuck. Not Genji. I'm going to go with Ray because the game calls him straight up cheesy. And I, I like that. The teleportation technology used to deploy Exos to the battlefield Exos being these guys here, your units, is highly demanding on the Exo driver, managing the neural link. So few can perform any but the simplest transportation. Ray has a brain of such caliber, however, that he can use one of the cheesiest, I we mean most powerful, exploitations of teleportation technology, flipping an Exo with a copy of it from the past. In practice, this means the first two times you lose an Exo in each mission, it will instead be replaced by a completely restored version of itself. This man's out of control. Alright, so I'm gonna go with him. It doesn't specifically say he's easier than the other characters, so I, I suspect he's not. I, I suspect they're balanced in some way, but I don't know. His ability sounds really good. I haven't played as him before. Both previous times I played with Meg, who gets better gear. So him. All this stuff down here, uh, it increases your score, so I assume this stuff makes it more difficult, so I'm not going to go through all that. I am going to go on Iron Man, even though it says right at the bottom, if you are new to this game and are wondering, is Iron Man right for me? The answer is no. Please get familiar with the game first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Iron Man anyway, mainly because I'm stupid. All right, and I, and I haven't done Iron Man before. Now, these are the things you play with. You only play one at a time, but... Uh, it's weird. It's weird. You switch between them, they all cover one tile, they all have different abilities. If one's destroyed, it's immediately replaced. The music in this game is fantastic, by the way. Uh, I'm going to turn that up and shut up for a second. Alright, sorry about that. I just had to... If, if my talking is completely interrupting, and I never get the audio quite right so you can hear the music very well. Or sometimes it's too loud. Okay, we are going to stick with an Assault, because historically, Assault and Siege have been my killers. Uh, Ninja, I'm not too good with. And I don't want two of the same thing. Brawler seems scary to me, so I'm going to go with a Sniper. Ultra long range weapons, and the ability to see much farther than usual. This guy might be my scout, actually. And a science guy is freaking necessary to get gear. So, okay. Whoa! Okay, this is the first time I've seen this. Are you sure you want to start a game with Iron Man toggle checks? Just make sure you understand. Uh, you can't save at all. You save and quit, or you, you quit. And you don't want to play Iron Man. That's what it's saying. You're stupid if you play Iron Man. Uh, your save is automatically updated anytime something really embarrassing happens to you. So, 
Well, at least you guys know that I, I won't be reloading saves. It's going to be really embarrassing. Okay. Uh, briefing. Oh. Just launched a surprise bombing run against our main hangars. Destroyed all our exos save for the four you had with you on the training grounds. You're practically still a trainee, but you're the last exo pilot we have. Grintel says you've got 50 days before the bots attack our headquarters in mass. Weaken them, strengthen yourself before that time comes, and then be prepared to fight them off our doorstep. If you fail, then failure's likely. And our friendly corporate owners will invoke their amputation clause. In other words, they'll nuke the city to keep the bot rebellion from spreading. You know well as I do that evacuation is impossible. The other cities are just as full as this one, and even the shelters are overflowing with the needy. You've got 12 million lives in your hands, including mine and your own, so get to it. Okay, uh, hopefully you guys can hear that. I, I, I made it so. But uh, basically, I, I'm not going to read all this. We have 50 days. This, this days until final battle is going to count down every mission we go on and it'll show how many robots are manufacturing the every turn every day and how many credits we have this on the right is our enemy at the end of 50 days this is the force that will attack us as you can see they're all level one and there aren't like millions of them or anything but every day there's gonna be 33 more and they're gonna level up some missions can reduce their levels some missions can get us a lot of gear the idea is to get to that final battle and be stronger than them when you get there. Um, and to do that, you go on all these missions, which are pretty cool. You got your hostage rescue, which is supposed to give you some loot if you can rescue certain cryopods. Hacker, uh, more locked doors with loot. And let's see, reactor. Power is the lifeblood of the city, your bots, your exos, you name it. Experimental research facility was once devoted to figuring out how new ways to cram more power into smaller spaces So it gives us a specific type of gear and a blockade which is an easy mission that doesn't get us much Pat so that you've got like more missions. We can see what they are for a few ranges out There is a character. I think that can see the whole freaking map right to start with we don't get to do that So we kind of have to decide which way we want to go straight up and shield works holes and shields I think for like specific stuff, um, assassination, key intel, we've discovered a couple of the largest boss style boss are located, we can, okay we're not supposed to do this mission for a long time, or this one I suppose, so we can get like specific types of gear, we can go for reactor gear, um, or shield gear, or hacking gear, or no this is lots of gear but we have to have hacking equipment, which we don't really yet interesting or we can go for nothing and unlock this stuff parts uh, internal upgrades that work for our exos or the assassination thing or science stuff I don't know I don't know what to do uh, exo and customization so how it works is all of our units have these different customization slots they're different for each type of unit and we have this gear over here that we collect during missions and we start with some and we attach it to units to upgrade them quite nice you get your guys as powerful as you can basically I like to upgrade whoever my scouts going to be the most and I think I'm gonna make this sniper my scout uh, and I consider my scout the person I move around with the most so we've got a gamma ray laser with a low ammo capacity only 18 shots but a great range and a laser rifle which has a higher ammo capacity slightly lower range and slightly lower attack so let's see um, this just gives power, which is not a huge deal early on, but we're gonna we're gonna toss it on there. This uh, power is basically the what limits us when we upgrade our units. I've not played far enough to have enough gear to worry about power maxing out. It doesn't affect you at all in the uh, missions it's themselves. Um, okay, plus 15% ammo capacity. It doesn't work on any of my weapons. Let's see. Hardened field emitter, damage reduction goes on the shield, that works, and sentry turret, fits in the computer and we can drop down the sentry turret, that's fine. Now let's go over to our assault, and I'm sure that our assault can 
pop that in his grenade launcher. Actually, if I can pop that in a grenade launcher, that, how do I, how do I, there we go. I might be able to pop it in a rocket launcher. Yes, I can. Because that rocket launcher doesn't have very much ammo, and this rocket launcher saves my butt so much. Or did in a couple of missions that I have done. I've never used the sniper before, but I suspect he's going to be quite good. Uh, there's also a store, but I don't have any money yet. And even when I've had none, I've never actually stopped by here. Because it seems like a pain to look through all this, and I don't really understand it yet. What we need. Hmm. Okay, so which mission do we want to go on? We're going to get at least one mission done this episode. Uh, hacker, Hostage Rescue, Reactor Fab, or Blockade? Well, I think I want to go... Not Hacker for sure, because I only have the one science bot and he can only open like nine doors. Hostage Rescue. Kill all the bots before they can kill all the hostages, basically. I'm going to try it. I've not had this mission before. Uh, this is describing what missions are. I, I know how to play. So there's that. So these are human cryopods. I'm trying to protect these. And to do so, I need to kill 31 robots. Um, all these things here, are that's our sensor range. That's the edge of our vision. We need to get past that. So we're going to switch to our sniper because he has a longer sensor range. And we're going to start moving around and killing anything we see. Now we can pr hold shift and see our attack range, which is really far with this guy. Oh my goodness. And uh, that's amazing. We do have stealth mode on all our characters, by the way. It's really useful. And there's our enemies. So an ammo bot is who we can see right now, and we can just shoot him from here, which is amazing. Very nice. I like it. I, I think this sniper is going to be my best friend. Cover. So cover's a thing. And these blue things are enemies that don't know I'm there. If I switch to siege and my rocket launcher. Uh, let's click on that. Let's see, I can rocket launch right here and kill all of this probably. So, bam. Hopefully there weren't any human cryopods right there. Oh, there are a bunch of enemies that see me now. I like taking large numbers of guys out at once. It helps. Let's switch to assault. I think that he can handle that with his grenade launcher now. Uh, switch to grenade launcher. Bam. And bam. You can hold shift and it will uh, it'll let you target the ground. That's what I'm doing there. Uh, alternately, you can just click on guys. But by targeting the ground, I can hit the guys that I can't see, which is nice. These are more cryopods. I don't want the enemy to hit those, so I'm going to kill them. Uh, cover. I th think... It's in my best interest to switch back to my sniper and kill that dude. Okay, so all that's cover. I might want to switch to my laser rifle if I'm going to be destroying cover. Uh, cover. 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 What's that? Cover? Dang! Alright, we're, we're going to switch to our siege and just blow up all this cover. Oh, there's a human cryopod there. I don't want to do that necessarily. Okay. A dumb bot. We're going to switch back to our sniper then. Oh, man. Um, well, I can't get to that dude through these mines. and The only way I know to get rid of mines is to shoot them. So we're going to switch to our assault and shoot these mines out. Using a uh, kind of ammo that I don't use very often, basically. So they're not really going after the cryopods. In the mission briefing, it said they would. I guess the mission briefing kind of lied. I'm not going to lie and say I'm upset about that. Uh, more cover there. Ooh, taking damage. So they're not very good right now, but they're going to get better. And that's a little bit scary. I, I'm taking damage. He missed. And missed again. That's good. I'm going to switch to Siege. No, I'm going to switch to Assault. While they approach slowly. Switch to this weapon. And shoot right there. He died. 
Okay. Uh, the things the robots say when you kill them is pretty funny. I'm going to switch over to Siege because I see a bunch of guys right here that I want to take out. 16 enemies left. Um, interesting. Alright, we're going to pop them right there. And this guy lived. That's fine though. Our sniper can probably handle it. Um, he's leaving, I guess. We can just sit here and wait for him to move to a place where I can kill him. There we go. Okay. Lots of human cryopods have survived. I think I want to switch to my assault for this. And light machine gun to destroy this cover. And... I don't necessarily want to do that. I think I'll switch to the siege. And blow the crap out of this whole area. That seems best. And I'll do that again to kind of deal with those guys in a big group there. Don't like them being in a big group like that. Alright, we, we're running low on big rockets, so we're going to switch to our assault. What is that? It's an ammo bot. Not a big issue. Eagle bot. Uh, straight from the windy foundries when, of the, in the eagle face forest. When swooping, these eagles get locked in the direction and cannot move in a different direction. So these guys are stuck moving back and forth. These are, there are some interesting enemies. I should be describing them kind of as we go. Um, I might start doing that. I just have to get used to the idea of surviving for a couple of turns first. Like, the don't tread on me robots are the funniest for sure. Okay, so we've got what going on right now. All of our dudes are still alive, which is nice. We've got three enemies left. That's also nice. As far as I know, no human cryopods have been destroyed. Which is incredible, I think. So these doors here that I've been ignoring, basically, my science guy can open them, and they've got loot inside. And I, I guess I'm going to be going after that now, since I... Actually, I shouldn't. I should go after my enemies. Because, yeah, they're destroying the cryopods. Sniper, kill that. Um, are you... You're, he's in range, isn't he? There he goes. Bam. Uh, laser rifle. That was my gamma ray laser. There's one enemy left somewhere wandering around, probably destroying cryopods. Alright. So we lost some cryopods, but we've got all the enemies now. So we're going to wander around as our science guy, and we can zoom out. These are all the locked doors we can go into. They'll all have loot behind them. Could have done that along the way, I suppose, but I didn't. Uh, mainly just to save time. So this is all stuff that we're going to be equipping after the battle. Is that cover? That's cover. We can destroy that. And take that. And if you look at the left here, we have a limited number of doors we can open. It's our hacking number. I assume later on like doors might be harder to open or something like that. And it's pretty easy to get hacking equipment, actually. I've gotten really large amounts of hacking equipment in my previous missions. So what does this do? Shield recharge. Are you sure? Uh, restore this Exo's maximum shield. No, I, I would do that with the sniper. There we go. Uh, not that it matters, to be honest. And from here, I'm going to shoot that. Loot. Why is it saying loot? Oh, cannot fire a pistol due to system damage. I'm EMP'd for some reason. That's interesting. Uh, I was EMP'd again. What are these? EMP mines? Alright, my assault can do it then. Um, maybe that pistol can only fire like once every million turns. The science bot is not very good at combat. Which is really questionable. And by questionable, I mean terrible. Uh, three more hacking bits, though. What does this do? Uh, all of this exos ammo to maximum ammunition. Yeah, we didn't need to open that. It's not real loot. I prefer real loot since I ended the mission already. Anywhere else that we can't see, haven't seen? Nope. And here's our exit in the warp pad. So that's how missions go. Great work. Great work. I see your exos took a beating. I see your exos took a beating. Don't worry. Engineers will take care of that. Yeah, I'm going to repeat him after everything. Now... 
what we can see here is for every human cryopod I looted that I saved I got a piece of loot I'm supposed to get loot at for um, each one of my guys that survive as well but I'm not sure about that as you can see all of my enemies leveled up and there are more of them so that's kinda scary close and during the final battle we'll face off against all of them that's what that's telling me and then we just upgrade our units so we've got all this new gear that we can use now I am I'm stuck on the idea that I want my sniper to be my scout so he needs the best shields and he needs the best weapons most ammo as well uh, plus 50 he's got this has got regen which is probably good and it gives attack power interesting uh, this gives to shields or just about anything else and as to shield related stats and computer related stats damage reduction to shields but not as much and it gives regen and this gives to shields and minus power to slots and what is this giving damage reduction I don't want the damage reduction so much so let's get rid of that and I think this thing which gives plus 82 to shields is fantastic uh, it could give other things if I put it in weapons for instance it would increase attack power but I think shields are important and then I think the thing that gives regen as well as shields yes that is probably really nice for me now my gamma ray laser is there anything I can attach to that this will give it plus 23 percent attack power I think that's excellent uh, my laser rifle nothing can be attached to my reactor here uh, mark to overcharger of the wind uh, it adds to some overall stats that I'm not too concerned about this gives 20 regen and a bunch of power yes please that seems that seems good the regen seems good now I, I regenerate 37 uh, each turn that you do not get hit you'll regen one-fifth of the listed value until all eligible damage is repaired so regen is most effective if you can take cover between hits so as my scout this will be really effective on him because there will be lots of time between hits my propulsion system uh, this guy can get over those mines with this and I might want to just give him two. Oh, this gives a shield as well that's fantastic and for my computer system gives some mines and gives Sentry turrets, but I don't want to use this because it gives hacking points, and my science guy needs that. Uh, minus two need by parts. I don't need to give him mines either. So next, uh, let's let's go ahead and do the science guy. Plus to hacking, he always needs that, and I can honestly give him mines. So that's all I want to give him because I don't use him for fighting. Laser rifle doesn't get anything. Light machine gun can get extra ammo capacity so can grenade launcher um, I think I'm gonna pop some ammo capacity on that grenade launcher as well as this rocket launcher so uh, it's up to nine whereas without this it's got eight one extra shot I think it's totally worth it to be honest these these rockets are amazing from my siege guy as you saw last time around uh, back to this guy my light machine gun there's nothing for it my laser rifle there's nothing for it shields this is my backup scout so regeneration um, regeneration and damage reduction they all seem good to me my reactor yes I, I can do that and this goes to propulsion and that is all of my gear so we, we've equipped we are equipped my sniper has a better weapon now some better shielding yeah I think we're good let's go back to the city map and where do we want to go next actually I think that's a good place to end this episode one mission and we had all the introduction stuff uh, we can see where we want a mission and I think shield works seems like a great place to go next to be honest and it leads to this destruction thing that's interesting I, I haven't done that before 
Or maybe we could head towards science and reactor. I don't know. Maybe hacking. Who knows? All right, guys. This has been Jay Plays Indie Games. I can't promise I'm going to do this entire campaign, but I'm going to try because this seems like fun. By the way, this is all randomly generated. All the levels are randomly generated, and the map in the order of things is randomly generated, which is awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.